Hi, I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio, and welcome to the Mayor's Roundtable. Here we are with half round table, intelligent conversation, but it's three men this evening. We do have a full-time guest with us. Mayor Roger, Robert Woodruff, thanks for your time tonight. Councilman Kevin Hall, thank you for your time tonight. It's gonna to be a great show, and it's really gonna be about one central theme this evening, and that's gonna be the redevelopment, Mayor. So let's that's get correct. started with it. Uh, it's okay. coming down the pike. You've done some research. Uh, we have some information coming out towards the community about redevelopment. Where do you want to start? Okay. Well, first, Doc, in honor of the rubber ducky race. That's right, May 30th, May rubber 30th, ducky race. We're going to put the rubber ducky right up front, front okay. and center. Um, in keeping with the format of uh, the Mayor's Roundtable this year, where we're trying to get uh, individuals who were employed by the township giving information to the people, uh, and in this instance, we have Kevin Hall, who's an elected official, and Kevin has been our point person with respect to the redevelopment issue. Uh, and before we get into, um, you know, discussion with Kevin and, and, and letting him take us to where this has gone and where it is going, uh, I thought it's appropriate to just give a little historical context. Uh, dating back as far as 1977, the council uh, at that time recognized a significant need to address the infrastructure of the, then the fire department, the police department, as well as the uh, administrative offices in the, uh, in the township, and they authorized a study. Uh, nothing came about, but eventually we got a new fire department, which is uh, up on Hamilton, uh, but the other needs uh, just couldn't be addressed. In 87, that was all, 80, 88, 87, that was also uh, addressed, and nothing went uh, at that point in time. In 1998, a resolution was passed and a committee was even formed to address the, the infrastructure issue. That was followed up again sometime in the uh, 2006, 2007, 2008 era, period of time, when again, uh, the elected body saw the necessity to have to make some steps, take some moves and improve uh, the infrastructure of this town. Unfortunately, we had some extreme fiscal issues back then and as everybody's aware of. So that brings us to today. All right, and, and actually brings us to in the last couple of years. Um, about three years ago, I got a phone call from a member of uh, the finance committee of the Little Flower Church. Okay. All right. Um, uh, in, in interest of full disclosure, I am not a member of the Little Flower Church. All right. All right? And um, they indicated that they were well aware of the, uh, of the property concerns we have here in town, the infrastructure needs. They indicated that they had the property up at Little Flower, which we'll call the Hamilton uh, okay. property. Uh, that that was becoming a burden on them financially. Uh, they believed that um, they could best address uh, their parish's needs by, uh, by dealing singularly with the older church, uh, which, as we all know, sits right next to the township library. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they said what they'd like to do is discuss possibly an exchange of property and would we be interested? Well, in light of what I know had been going on, and I have since found out more information, but. The, the goal of various prior councils and to try and address this problem, and one of the, uh, if not the most pressing problem, was there was no property, there's no land, okay? Well, here's an opportunity for land. So, uh, Mr. Hall and myself uh, met with uh, those representatives, and I still remember to this day us walking out of, of, uh, of the meeting at a local restaurant and looking at each other and almost simultaneously saying, this is it. This is our answer. This is how we're going to address these problems. So it, we then had to, to decide how we were going to do this. Okay. Now, what a lot of people need to understand is the original charge, that is what uh, we as a council undertook, and, and then Kevin and I were both council people prior to being mayor, was, okay, this is the offer. This is the circumstance. Let's examine this. So that's how it began, right. okay? Now it has evolved, and we'll get into how it's evolved, but I thought it was appropriate that from a historical context that everyone understand how this came about. Got it, okay? got it. How this came about. So, so Kevin, if I understood the mayor correctly, this is really goes back to 1977. The, the original plans back there were to change the municipal offices and buildings at that time? Goes back that far? I, I, I would, might catch it uh, differently. I would say that for decades now, uh, there has been this ongoing recognition that uh, there have been prior that, studies. That the buildings do not necessarily satisfy the requirements of the town. Okay, going back to the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2005, and I think this overture from Little Flower Parish really served as an interesting catalyst for us to start this discussion again. Right. 
So the conversation really was not about focusing on this land transfer or land transaction, but it really started to, we had to decide, is this a catalyst? Is this an opportunity for us to address this ongoing need Got to it. address the infrastructure? So issue? it seems like it was an organic type of fortuitous situation. Uh, it, absolutely, absolutely. What I found interesting about it is that uh, the initial discussions really had very little to do with Little Flower, that property, the library, but it required a reassessment as to what our needs were. Got so it. when the governing body got together, they said, let's examine what our needs are. Do we even know what our needs are? And it lent itself to really two mandates, which we engaged outside professionals to assist okay. us in. One was a needs analysis. We said, let's go back and talk to building aside, infrastructure mm -hmm. aside, square footage aside, mm -hmm. let's talk to each of the departments and find out what do they need to get the job done, to really right. provide a reliable, uh, sustainable service to the community. And there was a, a rather significant study done at the department level to find out what they need, not only from a manpower point of view, but square footage, filing, sure, 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 how sure. Much, what's the spatial requirement? Mm -hmm. So without consideration for any particular property or building, we have to understand what the framework is in terms of what our deliverable is. So, so that's where we got into this whole process. Right, that, that allowed us to frame what our needs are. Separately, and as a complement to that, we had requested that they examine the Hamilton Park property to say okay. that you know, they want us to consider this land transfer, but is that suitable at all in the first place? Yeah. So in order for us to know that, we have to know what our needs are. And then with that as background, we can look, take an objective look at that property to see, in fact, does that does allow us to address these needs in the first needs. place? Yeah. And I think the entire, the initial discussion was an understanding of what our needs were, and which would give us a roadmap to how we can address those needs. Got it, got it. So, where do we stand then, Mayor? What's, what's well, going on? Because we've been talking about this for a while now. So, well, what, what's yes going on? Yes, we have. Well, I, I think there needs to be a little bit, little bit more of a background here. Um, uh, what was then done, and, and uh, what Kevin's re referring to, is that we had professionals engaged, appraisers, uh, architects, mm -hmm. and the like, to determine, like Kevin said, is this, uh, the, is it even fit what we need? So we had to determine need, yeah. we determined need, mm -hmm. yeah. we had to determine, okay, what do they offer us, <laughs> okay? And then you had to do things like appraise the respective properties, because it was clear that what was at that facility uh, meaning the Hamilton, the Little Flower, mm -hmm. uh, was a, a more a, a larger structure, sure. so on and so forth. So you're really doing a, an appraisal and then a brick and mortar exchange. Now, one of the issues um, which popped up, and, and it's become an infamous uh, phrase during all these proceedings, is what is known as the reverter clause. The reverter clause is a doc is a clause that was in the a, a deed when the township sold the property. Ex sold the property subject to this reverter clause to Little Flower Church. Now, people need to remember this is the early 60s. Baby boomer generation is starting oh, to go yeah. to school. Mm -hmm. Schools are expanding and growing everywhere, sure, public sure, schools. Sure. Most sure. of your public schools were built back into the 50s and yeah. early 60s. This gave the, the township an opportunity to avoid possibly building more public schools. Sure. So the, the Catholic uh, parish started their own school. Got it. Now this reverter clause essentially says that it must be used for educational purposes and so on and so forth. That piece of property. That piece of property. Now, some mm. people have asked us, well, why don't you just take it? Well, we can't do that, okay? Because the courts have defined educational purposes very, very liberally. Okay. All right, so we can't do that, and number one, and number two, you just can't take somebody else's property. They have enhanced the value of that property and that presents other issues. So. We had that Roberta clause, and that's been extremely important to us because, uh, and, and I'm going to ask Kevin to explain on this right now, we have an, an agreement with Little Flower which is going to expire at a certain point in time, and I'll have Kevin speak about that. At which point in time, if the church determines that they are no, no longer wish to deal with us, which they don't have to, they can sell that property to anybody they wish as long as that purchasing agent or entity mm -hmm. fits under educational purposes. Uh, now that could be any religious uh, institution. Yeah. It could be. It could fit a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. So the question then that but it, it could be profit or non-profit. Right. Both. Education does not mean uh, correct a grammar school or a high school or college. It can mean anything which, broadly speaking, fits into someone's definition of what education is. Lincoln Tech Institute. 
I mean, you know. Arguably. Kevin, if, if you would, I, I, could you please uh, let, let the audience know what kind of an agreement we entered into with the church and what are the ramifications of that agreement? As, as loose as it may be, it's still an agreement of some sort. Right. The, I mean, the Little Flower uh, Parish said, you know, we would like you to consider this opportunity. And it was hard for us to respond head on because we didn't know whether it was an opportunity or not. Because remember, we're trying to figure out what are our needs? Yeah. To, is that suitable for the needs? Um, what is the configuration which it would actually address all the, the, the residents and the community services? So we said we would like the opportunity to explore, to, to research it, to better understand, and to explore the different options and opportunities mm -hmm. to available to the town. Um, if, in fact, the conclusion is constructive, we would like okay. to entertain this property transfer with you. But we need to have a sufficient number of out clauses, so to speak, put options where if it doesn't make any sense, we would not be held to it. So we agreed as a memorandum of understanding that we would determine what the relative values of the properties are. So by state law, if you actually are going to transfer these properties, you have to do it at fair value. Okay. So that we need to have independent appraisers to determine what the value of each property is. So when you transfer it, uh, whichever one is worth more money, one person yeah. has to pay the it's other. It's equitable. It must be equitable. So we, we said let's agree uh, to a methodology to determine what is fair value. Mm -hmm. Let's to agree to a, what a number would be to allow each of us to calculate what the economic break-evens are and whether this makes sense from a business point of view. At the same time, allowing each one the opportunity to nullify or void the contract if, in fact, it doesn't serve each purpose sure. purposes. We had this contract originally... Uh, it expired in April. Okay. Of this year? Of this year. Okay. And so we met again and we said we'd like to have more time to do this research because as you know that we have committed to significant due diligence and research and we're just not done yet. We're not in a position to really consider all the different options and we wanted an extension to that. Little Flower said we will provide that extension one time only. And that extension ends in November, the last day of November. Interesting. So at that point, they're going to say, listen, folks, we've given you a significant amount of time to analyze it, to assess whether it makes sense for the community. But uh, this is not a perpetual free option. If not, they're you. moving forward, apparently. They, 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 they said they, they're they, moving forward yeah. with something. They've made a decision to move on. Yeah. So they can move on with us or without us. And they said as of November 30th, we're done. Interesting, interesting. So, so that really puts us, Mayor, under not to, it yeah. puts us under the pressure to yeah. really to try to come to terms with the So if I, if I remember correctly, I think I was at the last show, you had mentioned you have uh, presentations coming up, but also there was uh, site analysis and development analysis and all different scenarios are being prepared and you're getting ready to roll them out. Are we getting closer to that? We're getting very close, uh, Doc, and, and just one, one addition there. Um, as as we've explained, this initial approach really dealt with with the the proffer, if you would, from from Little Flower. Sure. And as we looked at this deeper, and we had five public meetings, it was clear from the, the what we heard from the people that they had certain issues and certain sure. certain issues and and what have you. So we really expanded our due diligence. And I'm going to ask Kevin give us a little idea because the the issue then didn't simply become an exchange and a m potential move, it became, well, what can we do on this site? Yeah. Okay. Knowing that we still have to consider, now you got to remember, you start with three non-tax revenue producing properties. You've got the Park Avenue, you've got the library, and you've got Little Flower. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, we would be remiss if we weren't seeking to at least obtain one property here which could be a tax revenue producing property. That would be nice. Us, and hopefully control that property. Mm -hmm. So as to, all right, so, so then we had to take a look at this, which led to an expansion really of what we wanted to do, uh, but we thought it was appropriate. And Kev, would you speak to that a little bit with respect to uh, what's going on with the, actually here at the Park Avenue? Right, okay. well, first I'd like to take a step back a little bit. Um, you know, we, we gave this mandate to these professionals about the needs analysis, the suitability of that property, and they gave a series of presentations uh, to present their findings yeah, to back us. Back here, last year. And, and in fact, it was a very, con it was a provocative, though, <laughs> though constructive, uh, series of presentations and that I think it really um, allowed people to understand the level of complexity in terms of what we're talking about. There are a lot of affected 
people in town by this thing. Not only the departments, but the library. I mean, it really affects the community, not only economically, but logistically, operationally, the aesthetic of it. And people sort of sat back and they said, wow, there is a lot going on here. And I have much more targeted questions I want you to respond to. So it was a very strong argument for people to think back, what information do I really need to start a substantive discussion? And the questions were, first, is this swap a want or a need? Like, yeah. what is this thing? Is how important is this or not? Second, without consideration for Little Flower's overture of this property transfer, what is the condition here? I mean, is this building suitable? Can we expand upon it? Can we modernize it? Yeah, sure. Or do we really have to build new here? And if mm -hmm. we were to do that, can you actually position all the services here effectively and efficiently? Okay. So let's take a, a look at this property without consideration for the overture from the Little Flower Parish mm -hmm. and see what's the viability of that. Sure. Secondly, if we were to, with that as background, if we were to now expand and look at the Little Flowers property up at Hamilton and, and include that as an option, what are the different scenarios mm -hmm. available mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. us? Mm -hmm. And so now on, on September, uh, on, I'm sorry, on June 16th, is going to be their finding and these professionals will be sit down and they're going to give um, a, a complete executive summary of all of these issues. Wow. So they're going to first talk about the Park Avenue property, the existing mm -hmm. building. Is this building, what is the state of the state? Uh, does it lend itself to uh, modification or enhancement or mm -hmm. increase mm -hmm. the footprint? Separately, uh, as an alternative, does it make more sense to build new? How would I approach that? What services would be available here? logistically what it would look like sure, sure, and sure. what would be a cost estimate. Separately, uh, Mike Mistretta, who is our town planner, will address all the questions people had about the Hamilton Park property in terms of what are the different scenarios available, single-family housing, commercial applications. Yeah. So on, on, six, on the 16th, there's an agenda. It's rather formal. Uh, it's going to start with a discussion about the survey of this property. In order to really examine what the options and opportunities are, we have to understand what is this property? What is the perimeter of this property? What is the, its relationship uh, with the railroad track? Are there, um, are there environmental issues which we have sure. to contain? So there will be a discussion about the survey and this property. There will be a discussion about the Park Avenue property. And uh, it will... Uh, you know, extend into a discussion of the Hamilton wow. property and its relationship thereof. So, so, so is this is this is June sixteenth? This June is 16th. you're going to sit down with the council members and you guys are going to go public. sit in the back. Oh, this is a public oh, no, no, hearing. No, this is a public hearing, and it will, there will be a moderator. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're bringing in a neutral moderator who will only know the information that has been gathered so far. Got it. Uh, we uh, we wanted to let we, we just thought it was more appropriate for that kind of an approach mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and our professionals uh, at least two uh, Mr. Hall will be doing uh, you know uh, having some input in so far as advising where we're at and so on and so forth what we intend to do and what we intend to get out of uh, of that of that proceeding and each of those individuals are going to give all of the options that they think are viable options okay, okay? but we're also asking we've asked them for their professional opinion. Got what it. do they believe, knowing what the mission is of this council and the elected officials, based upon what the needs of this township are, what do they recommend? Got it. Okay, now, bringing up another unpopular topic right now, and that is affordable housing under COA, uh, a little bit of this goes hand in hand. Okay. Because we have obligations pursuant to Mount Laurel 1 and 2, which came out about 20, 30 years ago, and has uh, been the subject of a recent Supreme Court decision. That decision essentially says um, you've got obligation to provide affordable housing. Uh, we are in the midst of doing that, of, of determining what that is. We okay. need to uh, file a, uh, an action, declaratory judgment action. That's also due uh, around November, too, that, if I that, remember. That's due in July if, okay. we can, if we can put ourselves in a position that, uh, uh, which we think we can, mm -hmm. then I, I think we'll be okay. But, um, but all of this tends to interact, yes, okay? Happening. And we well, cannot, once. you can't do this in a vacuum. Yeah, yeah. So at the same time, we're doing all of those things. I think the 16th will be a, 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 a I think the people in the town will see that a, a significant amount of effort and work has been poured right. into this. And, and they will see all of the options. Nice. Um, we have an idea what the options are, but, mm -hmm. and uh, there's been no, no decisions. Uh, ultimately, it has to go to the planning board. Right now, our, our uh, 
our planner is, is uh, dealing uh, with the planning board to determine he's going to make a representation as to whether he believes the uh, Hamilton property and the library are also should be uh, re redevelopment land, should be mm -hmm. declared redevelopment land. That has certain benefits. Kev, can you get into that quick before we get out of this? Sure. Well, yeah, two things. What, yeah. what is the purpose of the June 16th meeting? Yeah. There, there, there's yeah. two purposes, really. One is to, is to present their findings. Got it. And then second is to actually present the facts and give recommendations. Because what we want to do is to frame the conversation. There are so many issues. It is so complex that the goal is to really frame it in a specific way and allow residents to really understand the facts, question them, voice an opinion, and that hopefully that will allow for a more focused uh, discussion, constructive discussion yeah. in terms yeah. of how to go forward. Mm -hmm. So, Mayor, we're going to take a short break in a moment, but okay. cost. What's it going to cost? It, it's very difficult. It's a, it's a little premature right now. Uh, we're getting there, okay? On the 16th, there will be some numbers available, okay. uh, which will um, show uh, the, co the anticipated costs of building in certain locations. Yeah. The, hard the hard costs. The hard costs, yeah, the hard costs. And um, so we're getting there, okay? Uh, the ultimate costs with respect to taxes, which is what everybody asks, okay? Um, that needs to wait until we work our way through this, but we will, we're getting there. Okay. I, I, think, I think the public will see the June 16th is, is a watershed moment, so to speak, for this yeah. entire process. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Well, gentlemen, we're going to take a short break. Uh, Mayor, we have our Ask the Mayor roundtable uh, right. questions. We're going to come back with Ask the Mayor, and then we'll finish up with some closing comments. Councilman Kevin Hall, Mayor Robert Woodruff. Oh, by the way, our live audience, give yourselves a hand, please. <laughs> Appreciate everybody coming out. Uh, we film at 645 the third Thursday of uh, every month, so be here and participate in our audience. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio and we'll be right back. For our community segment, it's all about the Rotary Club, and if it's springtime, that means it's rubber ducky time. That's right, rubber ducky races are coming for the 12th year here in Berkeley Heights. Hal Dolme and Michael Shapiro, past presidents of the Rotary, are gonna tell us about it. Hal, what's the deal with rubber ducky? It is, as you just said, it's the 12th year. We're going to have well over 1,000 ducks coming down the, uh, excuse me, 4,000 ducks coming down the river. And uh, that'll be on Saturday the 30th of May. And uh, by the way, the duck race itself starts right around 3 o'clock, but doors open at noon. It is a free admission event, so come on in. And Mike, where does the money go that's being raised? Uh, well, this year, uh, a good chunk of the money is going to scholarships at Governor Livingston High School. There's going to be a minimum of four $1,000 scholarships that are going to be given out this year to graduating seniors this year. So come support the 2015 Rubber Ducky Race so we can support our 2015 graduates. Hal, where can people get their ducks? They are around town at, uh, for example, uh, Investors Bank certainly has tickets for sale, and uh, you'll find them uh, usually around various stores in town. Uh, they'll also be at halls, um, and everybody goes to halls this time of year, so you've got to come on out. And uh, the tickets are there. You're adopting a duck. Uh, you're not buying it because we need to keep the duck for a little while because your duck has to race. Now, how does that work, Mike? So what do they do at these facilities? How do they uh, b adopt a duck? Sure, sure. Well, basically what they do is for $5, they can adopt a duck. Um, they get a ticket that looks like this, and the number on the ticket matches the number that appears on the bottom of their duck, which this duck will then go down the Passaic River. Um, if their duck finishes in the top couple finishers of the ducks that go down the river, they win a prize. Um, this year, they're, they are gift certificates to Berkeley Heights businesses. Uh, first prize is a $250 gift, gift certificate to Berkeley Heights businesses. Very nice. Now, you yeah. notice I'm not blocking the sign. I hope Absolutely. That, okay? That's on <laughs> yes. purpose. Oh, something that uh, folks might want to know is that this is a green event. All of the ducks are removed from the river afterwards. Uh, we actually wash them all and then we donate them to children's groups. Hey, that's cool. Mike, do people have to be at the race uh, after they adopt a duck? No, no, they do not have to be at the race. They can adopt the duck. Um, they put their contact information on their, uh, their slip here, and so they're contacted uh, if they win, uh, regardless of whether they're there or not. And also, they, they can buy um, ducks the day of the race as well. And so that's important. They can come and adopt a duck that same day. They don't have to go to a business, but they can go to one of the businesses that are selling the tickets. Well, there you go. It's kind of a no-brainer to me. May 30th, noon, 
at the Passaic Park, adopt a duck, come on down, have some good food that the Rotary uh, members don't cook themselves anymore, That's but right. it's going to be really good, Always and good. support scholarships. Gentlemen, thanks for your time today. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Pat Smith, Vice Chairman of the Suburban Chamber of Commerce, and I'm here with Pat Sakala, board member of the Suburban Chamber of Commerce, who is uh, my right-hand man here yes. in Berkeley Heights. And we're here to uh, bring you a very exciting announcement. The third annual Berkeley Heights Street Fair, presented by the Suburban Chamber of Commerce, is coming to the streets of Springfield Avenue, which is right behind me, on Sunday, June 28th from 10 to 5. Pat, how many people attended last year's street fair? I was going to ask you, 15,000? No, 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 no. More than 20, that? Over 20,000 visitors came to Incredible. enjoy food, entertainment, live entertainment, uh, drawings, and giveaways from over 100 local businesses and merchants. And this is something new. This is this hasn't been happening for many years. This is something. No, new this is just our together. this is our third year, and uh, the first two years have been great. Hopefully, there won't be any rain like we had the first year, but uh, you know it's family friendly as well. We have kids rides, there are uh, pony rides, fun amusements. There's really something for the whole family. So uh, it's, it's a great day out. It's a great day, especially when you have the young kids. Yeah, you have to bring the young kids out. You have to put it on your calendar. I'm going to be there. So and, 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 I, and I wouldn't miss it. But uh, what's the date again for this uh, street fair? Sunday, June 28th. 10 to 4? 10 to 5. 10 to 5. We're going to close down the Springfield Avenue from Snyder here to Plainfield. Over 100 vendors, lots of family fun, lots of giveaways, lots of great food, Is lots of entertainment. Is the mayor going to be here? I believe the mayor is going to be here al to be along, with, along with a lot of other important people in Berkeley Heights. So we invite you to come on down, have a lot of fun, and see what beautiful downtown Berkeley Heights has to offer. Welcome back to the show. Well, Mayor, uh, it's nice to see we're getting some emails. Uh, once again, anybody who has questions for the mayor, please email them to Bobby Peer at Tap Into. Then they come to me and I give them to the mayor. We do need your name, no anonymous questions. First one from Tom M. Did the town try to negotiate with the King's owner? Sounds like a better solution than the swap thing. Well, I'm assuming that Tom is suggesting that we move our municipal facility into the King's yes. building. I, I suppose. The answer to the first part of that question is no, we have not. Uh, and the, the and I would respectfully would differ with with Tom. I, it is not it does not fit the necessary needs and requirements of, of what is what we're doing. What we're doing and to put municipal offices next to. Uh, I, I guess we would put it near the frozen uh, the mall. Food section. Yeah, yeah it would be a little tough. Okay, a little tough. And, and I understand I understand the citizens saying, well, is it an opportunity to save some money and so yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. I, I get all that, mm -hmm. but it doesn't fit. You do a needs analysis, and okay. it doesn't fit. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your input, Tom. Right. The next one is from Robert D. A new resident to town, recently to town, little concerned about all the chit chatter. Why would you say that the community, not necessarily as a whole, but a very large number of people are upset with the way the town is being run, stemming from the top down? Okay, um, I'm not sure where the, uh, this gentleman who's, who's a newcomer, and we welcome him and his family. I don't know where the information's coming from. Um, uh, I know, I, I don't read the blogs, mm -hmm. uh, they're for, as they're formerly known, I, I don't read them. Um, I, my feeling is if a citizen has a position, we encourage him or, or her right. to come in here and stand at the dais, give yeah. them their name and, and where they live and tell us what they think. There you go. And if you disagree with what we're doing, then you're certainly entitled to do so. Um, you know, a lot of the blogs are, are anonymous, mm -hmm. and I have difficulty with anonymity, wow. um, but I understand the, the purpose of it. Well, look, we're a very vocal community. <laughs> that's the oh, bottom that's line. That's we're a vocal right. community. Uh, last one from Nelson S. How concerned is the Township Council about the property values of those of us who border the municipal complex? Well, we are extremely concerned from the standpoint that it is a part of our mission with respect to what we're trying to do with this redevelopment. Okay, it is one of our, uh, of our uh, uh, six enumerated uh, uh, issues with respect to the mission. Uh, I had a chance to speak with, uh, with Nelson beforehand and um, spoke to him about the fact that while we do have that concern and uh, anyone who lives proximate to, to, let's say, this area certainly says, okay, well, I would suggest that if, if this current structure, which is uh, physically um, uh, unattractive, I'm going to be mild, if we include the 
uh, Recreation Commission dilapidated building, which sits about uh, 150 yards from here. My, my inexpert, mm -hmm. non-appraisal, non-real estate opinion would be that a new facility here that is properly landscaped, whether it be a brand new building, yeah. brand new uh, township building, and or ex extremely um, high-end homes, it's going to be better. Be a be it's going to be a better choice. Everybody. Yeah, I hope that solves yeah. your question. Yeah. So yeah. thank you very much for your questions. That's Ask the Mayor, send them to Bobby Peer. That's enough for tonight's show. It's all about redevelopment. But what's the bottom line? June 16th, Governor Livingston High School. Come down, listen to all the presentation, get the facts, find out the history, find out the options, find out what's going on, be informed. That's what you need to do. Mayor, thanks for your time tonight. It was a great Thank show. You. Thank you. Kevin Hall, Thank great you. show. Thank you very much. I'm Donald DeFabio. Thanks for tuning in. And my live audience, give yourselves a round of applause. Have a nice night.